everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Chit Chat Chop Kids Edition. So we are taking recipes from our Kids Cook Supper Club, and we've got some of our biggest and brightest cooks here uh, to help out today. We've got Chefs Reese and Bria uh, with me in the kitchen today, and we are going to make an amazing apple crisp. So kind of a perfect dessert for the whole family to enjoy. And I don't know if you can see these girls right now, but they have got some killer dance moves that I can't even hope to replicate. But Chef Bria, Chef Reese, rocking it up. Great to see you. How are you two doing today? Good. <laughs> you're so you're, you're so happy you're dancing. I, I I appreciate that. I like that a lot. That's good. <laughs> you got rhythm. You got the funk. That's fantastic. So apple crisp, as you both know, it's apple season. And uh, uh, Bria, you were uh, you were telling me before you've got a lot of apples at your house. A lot, and I didn't get them from you. I got them. From <laughs> Where did you get them? Tell everybody. <laughs> Noggins. Noggins, there are a lot of great local apples there. Do you remember how many types of apples there were? There must have been so many. Yeah, there was a lot. I get Max, and yeah. Uh-huh. The real word is Macintosh. Exactly. Mac is just an abbreviation or a type of computer. Um, so that's, that's, just a, that's just a fun, nerdy thing for me. Um, but uh, these apples we're using today are called Paula Reds. Uh, so these are great baking apples, which, of course, is what we're going to do today. We're going to bake with these. Uh, Reese, do you have any favorite types of apples? Red Delicious. Ah, well, then it's in the title, isn't it? I mean, it's got to be delicious if it's called Red Delicious. Otherwise, it's false advertising. That is a very good one. Uh, I really like Honeycrisps and Jonah Golds. Those are really fun. And uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, you can find little uh, little Golden Delicious, too, that I really like. Those are nice. Yum. So anyway, uh, if you girls want to take your apples that we've already we've already chunked up our apples, so we each have about seven or eight apples of a, of a decent size, and we've just uh, basically cut them into chunks that are um, not too big, not too small. The great thing about an apple crisp is you can get everybody in the family to help cut them up, and they don't have to be perfect. And yes, that looks great, Bria. And I also like to take if you got the apple cores left over, I like to sort of do a little nibble around the outside of the apple core because there's always a little bit of extra apple left there. That's some good stuff. Uh, so to make the filling for our Paula Red Apple Crisp, what we need to do is sort of mix through a few things with our apples. So um, let's just look at the little containers we got here. First of all, let's look at the spices we have here. So you got a little container uh, that, yeah, give it a little sniff. Bria, what do you smell in there? I smell really delicious cinnamon that my mom puts in our parent cakes. Exactly. Cinnamon, that's a really good one. And then there's a little bit of nutmeg, there's a little bit of clove, and a little bit of cardamom, too. So we've actually got four spices in here, but they're all going to work so well with these apples. So we just want to sprinkle uh, the spices on the apples, just nice and even. That's perfect. And then we can give them a little stir around. You can either use your hands, or i got a little spatula here I'm going to use myself. There we go, just mix up those spices nices. Spices nices, listen to me. Um, and then uh, we need to add some flour to this because when these apples cook, there's gonna be a lot of water and apple juice that comes out of them. And you sort of wanna use that as a bit of a sauce for the apple crisp. So in order to do that, we need to add our flour. So we've got this little container of flour here. It's got two tablespoons of flour. And this is gonna be just enough flour to make these apples serve into like an apple sauce uh, at the bottom of our apple crisp. So just take your little container of flour and we're just going to sprinkle it right over these apples. Apples, apple. And again, we're going to mix that up nicely and just going to coat everything lightly. I didn't mush them up. And of course, you don't have to. Oh, good. What's that? Oh, you, 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 you can if you want, but cooking is going to mush them up more than anything. It's kind of nice to have them chunky at this stage, so let's mix up a little bit easier. All right, and then uh, last to go in with the apples is we've got uh, our brown sugar. Reese, you're, you're way ahead of the game. You know exactly what I'm looking for. So let's put that brown sugar in there, and we'll give that a mix. Uh, because these Paula Red apples are a little bit more tart uh, than other apples, a little bit of sugar goes a long way in here. Um, so that's perfect. But if you're using like 
a sweeter apple, you don't always need to put as much sugar in. So that's that's one thing I like to tell people when they're cooking. Like, um, you can always adjust the amount of sugar that you put that you put into things, depending on, of course, what you're putting in there. Now, um, Reese, what's a, what's a, what's another another fruit that you could that you could mix in here besides apples? Any ideas? Um. Pear? Yeah, there we go. Pear is a perfect one. That's a really good one. Like berries are really good in here. If you got some like raspberries that could go in, or like some blackberries. Um, also, I've done plums. Plums are really good in here. If you use like, you know, uh, part apple, part plum, that's really nice. You could also make one with peaches. Um, that would also be really good. But of course, we are doing the classic today. So how's how's it all looking? Why don't you why don't you you girls hold up your bowl to the screen? Let me see your apples. Because mine are all nicely coated. Bria looks great. Reese, perfect. Looks awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we all have our our little baking dish here that we can put our apples in. So just get that out front and center, and we're just gonna put our apples right. In. Well, I'm gonna throw mine across the room by accident. Sorry about that. Um, but you can just carefully place all your apples. Uh, and transfer them from the bowl into our little casserole dish. There we go. This sort of this is where you can pat them down a little bit so they're a little bit flat because we want to make a nice even layer for our uh, for our crumble topping that's going to come up here. There we go. Boy, that smells like fall, doesn't it? It smells so mm. good. So good. Cinnamon is one of those spices. If you just have a little bit, it just makes everything smell so nice. Um, I love this time of year because like from Thanksgiving right through to Christmas, you get all these beautiful spices uh, in the air and everything smells so good. And you get so, so great. Candy. So that's our kind of, yes. Halloween. Halloween. Uh, what are you girls being for Halloween? Reese, what are you doing? Um, you have a costume? I'm probably gonna be, um, Stitch, but or oh, cool! Harry Potter. Nice, nice. Bria, what about you? What are you thinking? I have a bunch of costumes at home, and since we're probably not going to get to go like real trick or treating, so I'm probably mm -hmm. going to take a, a costume because that it's like the point to go trick or treating and have a costume. So, um, mm -hmm. I thought that I, since I have so many costumes at home this year. And my mom thought too that we could just use the costumes I have. So I I don't really know. I'm just gonna. I have a lot of costumes. I can be popcorn. I can be a skeleton. You're, you're gonna mix. Ooh, cool. You you're gonna mix it up. I love so it. That's a great idea. That's a long answer for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I, I like that, uh, Bria. You're very passionate about your costumes, and you've got a lot of options. So I am not worried about you enjoying a uh, festive Halloween at all. Um, all right, so now it is time to make our crumble. So let's get a, an empty bowl. Uh, we're gonna move on to our empty bowl now. And in this bowl, we are going to, uh, here we go. First of all, we'll get our oats. So just find a container of oats. You can just put those oats right in the bowl. So that's one cup of oats. And then we're gonna take our flour. That's in another container there. This is half a cup of flour. And then we can just put this in with the oats and we'll give this a mix in just a second. And then uh, we need to get our brown sugar. So another container of brown sugar, this is one third of a cup of brown sugar. And just put that right in the bowl. And then one last thing is a, as a pinch of salt. Remember when we were making the soup the other day, uh, we needed a pinch of salt. This actually, sweet things really like salt too. So just a little pinch of salt in with this uh, topping will really help all that appley flavor uh, really come out. Um, because salt is a flavor enhancer, um, which is super cool. Uh, so uh, I, now, uh, yeah, go ahead. I just by accidentally grabbed the um, pepper instead of the salt, and then my dad was like, no, take the salt instead. <laughs> Did you put pepper in it? Because, I mean, you could no. be inventing a new recipe right now. No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. 
So now you can just mix it around with your, uh, with your spoon there. I'm going to use my hands because why not? I'm just going to mix it around. I'm going to get my hands dirty in a second, and so are you. So I'll just mix it all around. Basically, we just want to evenly distribute um, the flour. If there's any clumps in the sugar, you can just sort of break them up. But other than that, we are good to go. So now we need to find our last container, which is not cheese, but butter. butter. Right here. So we've got, ta-da, we've got a third of a cup of butter here. So what we want to do is we want to um, just drop these little cubes um, into our mixture here. And we're going to sort of mix this up with our hands in such a way um, that the butter is going to mix in with everything really smoothly. Um, so it's actually a French technique uh, known as sable, when you mix things up with your hands into little tiny, tiny pebbles. So you can just put that in your little memory bank for, for, uh, when, for you know, trivia time if somebody asks you that. Um, but what we want to do now, I've got all my, I'll just show you right here. So I've got my flour and oats and everything. I've just got the butter chunks all nice and separate here. And what we want to do um, is we want to sort of run it between our hands like this. So just check it out, girls. I'm just going to get a little bit of butter and the flour and stuff in my hands. And then I'm just going to rub it back and forth. And I'm going to keep doing this a lot. And what will happen is that butter is going to rub off. Uh, you might at first end up with a little like butter snake like I have here. But it will start to break down and sort of combine with all the flour. So you just keep mixing it and sort of rubbing it between your hands like this. Just back and forth. Nice flat palms. And then that butter, sugar, and, uh, and the oats will all mix together and become the crumble that we're talking about. Well, there we go. So uh, do you girls have any, uh, have any, I mean, we're doing apple crisp right now, which is one of my favorite desserts, but what about, what about you two? Do you have any other favorite desserts? What about you, Bria? Uh, yo-yos. Oh, yo-yos are so good. Oh my goodness. Um, Reese, has, has, have you ever had a yo-yo before? Yeah, yeah. You, she tried it at my house. I have pumpkin oh, cool. flavor. Yeah, they're the... Nice, pumpkin espresso, so good. And a lot of those spices in that pumpkin yo-yo are actually in our apple crisp as well. All right. And you can, uh, so how's that working for you girls? You see little like buttery pebbles starting to form in your bowl? Yes. Good. That's what we're talking about. That is the crumbly part of our crumble. Just like that. Reese, so what about you? Do you have any uh, favorite desserts? Um, I like, I love cake. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cake is, I mean, I can't argue with cake. That's fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, girls, check it out. Mine is almost ready, but not quite. Whoa! I have I have I have butterfingers. I almost dropped it. Imagine. Does this look good? Oh, it looks good. It's just getting very close. Maybe a little bit more rubbing around, but you see, it's I'm getting like these little clusters. But that's where it's all sort of the butter and the flour and the sugar are sort of clumping together. And it's going to be about half clusters and half sort of loose. Yeah, you're looking very close there, Reese. Maybe another 30 seconds or so, just rubbing it around, and you're good to go. Yeah, and that's it. That's it, Bria. Just sort of rubbing it between your, your palms of your hands, just like that. That's perfect. There we go. Nice and crumbly. All right, Bria, show me what you have there. Let's have a look. Oh, that looks crumbly. That is exactly what we're talking about. All right, great job, girls. So now we have our little buttery pebbles of uh, oats and flour and sugar. And now we can just sort of sprinkle them all over top of this crumble, which is really good. We're going to have a nice thick layer of crumble on top here. And this will this will get nice and crunchy. And then you got all those apples underneath. And I like to press mine down just a little bit because sometimes there's some nooks and crannies in there that I can all hang out in. 
Well, there we go. Just put this on the top like this. And a really cool thing about making a dessert like this is uh, I, I know like I'm going to bake mine right away so I can eat it tonight. But if you wanted, you could put this in the freezer, you could put this in the fridge, you cook it a few days later. You know, so you got some friends coming over and you want to show them like a great apple crisp that you made. Um, you don't have to bake it right away. You can get it ready the day ahead. And then you just pop it in the oven at about 45 minutes at 350 degrees and it's all done just like that. But there we go. This is my crumble right here. Reese looks fantastic. Bria Bravo, that is awesome. So we have dessert for the whole family ready to go. So um, so all this needs now is when you want to, whenever you want to bake it, it's 45 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. You can serve it up with ice cream, a little bit of yogurt, uh, whatever you got going on, it would all be delicious. Do you girls have any questions about what we just baked? Or just, just me? No. Nope. Good. Well, it's, it, it's, does it still smell good? That's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering about. Thank so, you, Andrew. Smells good over here. I got that cinnamon spice. Thank well, you, thank Andrew. you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bria. Thank you, Reese. That is the Kids Cook Supper Club Apple Crisp After School Special Edition. Uh, all done and ready to go here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we got our Kids Cook Supper Club, all kinds of great options for your kids to cook dinner for the whole family with recipes like these. And with star students like Bria and Reese, how can you not? It is uh, a great thing. So thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody. This is Chit Chat Shop. Back to you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Hey everybody, we are launching our Kids Cook Supper Club, which is a super exciting program that we've got going on for kids. So what does this mean? It means that you sign your child up and they cook dinner for the whole family. Uh, so uh, whether it be mac and cheese with a little salad, whether it be sloppy joes, a little roasted broccoli, they're gonna cook along with me here in the virtual studio and cook dinner for your whole family. So check it out, kitchendoor.ca, it's the Kids Cook Supper Club. I'm excited, and you'll be too, when your kids cook supper!